June 2014, PGP, Tony Bemis. sticks out that you know encryption and uh, signatures and stuff uh, so it'd be part of a track I suppose if everybody was doing it then it wouldn't stick out with it though. anyway so why encryption so you know the whole thing if I'm not doing anything wrong what then what do I have to hide again just like what I said that you know it's there, well there's private stuff, you know, credit card numbers, social security numbers, you don't want people to get. So if you're communicating with somebody, they don't have, uh, say, a secure website to send the info on, then you can encrypt it and send it. Or um, say you have a file with that info in it, and you want to send it to somebody. You know, things like business plans. There's been cases where uh, big, large deals have gone down, and, and not, or not gone down, because somebody else intercepted it and stole that job. Hmm. Uh, and then whistleblowers, just like with um, Snowden and, and other people, you can encrypt it, send it, uh, and secure it. Uh, but wait, is that to be a whistleblower or to prevent a whistleblower? To be a whistleblower. Okay. <laughs> to catch a whistleblower. Uh, all right, and then uh, Along, along with PGP and GPG, it's not just encryption, but it's also um, to confirmation of your identity, you know, for uh, authentication to, uh, to see who's actually doing the communicating. Plus, it's fun to make them think you have something to hide. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so why did this come about? Well, initially, Phil Zimmerman published uh, PGP in 1991. Uh, and his response was that the uh, you know, in the bill 220, 266, the uh, U.S. government wanted the secure communications to have a backdoor. So he wanted to create something that was peer-to-peer uh, -peer and that did not have that. Um, and from there, uh, PGP is a, a proprietary encryption and communication. It's freely available for anybody to use, but it's still proprietary, closed down. So, um, Werner Cook wanted to create and have it available uh, for an open source. So he created GPG, which is the GNU Privacy Guard. Um, and blah, 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 open source. Yay. <laughs> The two um, use the same encryption mechanism too. So if somebody's using P, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. They're, they're interchangeable. Say that again. That was. It's fully interchangeable. So if one person's using PGP and somebody else is using GPG, it works together. Okay. Um, so the how does GPG and PGP work? Well, they use a public and private key pair. And they're both uh, symmetric and asymmetric encryption, where the email gets encrypted with a symmetric algorithm, uh, and then the key 
Um, well, I get nervous and I get hard talk. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, anyway, it, uh, it first gets it encrypted uh, symmetrically, meaning it, it's a one-way encryption, or one-key encryption, and then, right? I don't know what I'm thinking right now. I don't know. <laughs> so let's, just go hey, let's just go. Well, here's a, a diagram. So first, you got the data, and you have a random key. This random key gets encrypted, along with the data gets encrypted, and then the two together is what is the encrypted message that gets sent. The reason why it, you have the two different ones here is because the to, for quick encryption, or decryption, it uses a lower uh, encryption rate, so it's a fast encrypt. Uh, but then the uh, random key is needed to decrypt it, and that random key is actually encrypted with with your strong um, public or private key. Ah, so the random key is a short piece of data that's encrypted really, really well. Right. With your Key. And then you need the two to be able to decrypt it. Uh, and then once the message is, is uh, received, then you have the data and then you have the key. So first you decrypt it with the, the really well encrypted, so then you get your random uh, code, and then it decrypts it again to get your original data. So. Uh, because we're pretty much Linux people around here, and I am. So I'm going to focus a little bit on how to use GPG on uh, your Linux system. Uh, there's a lot of command line ways to do it, and there's also GUI ways. So it's easy. Uh, you don't have to do it all command, but if you have a server, a headless server, you can still use it on there also. Uh, so, and I use Linux Mint. Uh, there's the key servers that hold your public keys. Um, and what I use in Mint is, where these are the three by default, the Ubuntu, the SKS, and the PGP.com. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stop. All right. But are you using this with email? Are you using this with uh, web? It's web traffic, are you using this with no. communication with between your hard two drive? People? So mainly it's, it's communications between two people. So it's emails or files that you want to be secure. Um, so it's once it's encrypted, then you send it to the person. You can send it over email. You can send it through a website, uh, through Dropbox, or whatever you want. And then once they receive it, then they decrypt it. And uh, you can use, like I said, either command line or uh, a lot of these um, uh, GUI programs will help you do that. I think an important thing to note is if I want to, if you and I are going to exchange emails, if I want to send Tony an email, I need to get his public key right. from someplace. Either he can send it to me or I can go to one of his key servers and get it. And I use that public key to encrypt the email, and only Tony can decrypt it with his private key. Anybody else having his public key can't, can't decrypt it. You have to have the private key to decrypt it. That's right. So that's why the... the uh, the uh, key server is, is, is a useful and important part of the, 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 the solution. It's all public keys? Exactly. Yeah. The key servers are all public keys? Yeah, yeah servers are public private keys. Key up on, on the key server. The private key you keep private. Exactly. Uh, is it like uh, the public key is uh, published everywhere? Or yeah, yes. it's published on key servers. Yeah, there's nothing Where? wrong with handing somebody your public key. They can't do anything with it. Other than create, other than encrypt things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they cannot decrypt right. files. Yeah, it's very similar to SSH key concept. Yeah, uh, the public key and private key. Yeah. Right. Basically, now, but I still need an authentic way to publish my uh, public key, right? So if I say this is my public key, so that still has to be authentic because someone might uh, take something else, like so. But my public key has to be sent out by me in. Yes. Well, I could send out your public key too. It's actually going to cover. It's, the it's hard key to create servers. to create keys. It's hard to create an identical key. So if you publish it and you say this is me, then 
that's where people can see that, can grab that key. Now, you can say this to me, you can put it on your own website, you can, or you put it on these uh, key servers. And the, uh, I can get, let me get a little more into, uh, well, I guess I, I didn't put a slide but on um, it's, Web it's of Trust. It's sometimes automatic. So on the first contact, like, uh, so like I think, uh, means like we had few of the thoughts around. So right. when, when I try to connect to a machine, on the first go, so the public key is something. You could, if you only wanted to send your public key to one person, you could email them. And yeah, you can send it to somebody, and, and yeah, you send it directly. I mean, there's the this key. So you have two keys. I think we can come private. back on that. So the, we got to continue. So okay. Well, how, it's how we do on. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a, a slide on. Stuff. I think the, you do. Because well, yeah, you it can be confusing, and, and yeah. I think that's part of why. It's uh, it's not widely used. So if I'm sending you something, I have your public key. Right. Right. And your. Do I configure private. my mail client with it? Right. Yep. Yeah. Your my mail client will be able to do it, or you can encrypt the file ahead of time. And it's just yeah, you encrypt it on the command line and attach it to your message. Mm -hmm. Basically, like hey, if you had a word document that you didn't want anybody to know about except you and him, you would <coughs> encrypt it using the public key. Then you would attach it to the email, the Word but document. And I'm just wondering, what, what do you use? So you you I use, use command line to encrypt a file and attach it to an email. Right. Well, command or line I can tools. encrypt the so, entire email itself right. so, uh, and with, with a configuration in the mail client, that evolution, Thunderbird. Correct. Yeah, and I'll go through that. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to, to set that up. Um, do you have a question? Is, uh, are these public private key pairs, are they one time add or can you use them over multiple messages like uh, channel communication? It's, it's always multiple messages. Oh, multiple so messages. you always keep the same one. Okay. You can have them uh, expire. It's possible to do that. Okay. But generally, it's it's like a, an SSL key yeah. where yeah. you know you have years right, of before it expires. Um, anyway, so to set up. Uh, and a GUI version for GNOME, uh, which GNOME is like what Ubuntu uses for, you can either do it in GNOME or um, Unity, 